you are you are in the presence of God the Holy Spirit is in this place and whenever he manifests his presence is because he wants to transform he wants to restore he wants to heal he wants to lift up so I want you to pray everybody that can pray in the spirit I want you to pray in the spirit now and I mean let it flow I want you to add intensity to your prayer to your worship to your prayer to your praise Come on, I want you to be intense about it. In the name of Jesus, in the name of the Lord, help us, Lord. We want to be transformed. We want to be restored. We want to be healed. We want to be lifted up by your spirit tonight. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name, we rebuke any spirit against the Spirit of God. And we declare prophetically that in the name of the Lord, there's a new generation being raised by the Holy Ghost. There's a new brand of warriors there's a new church emerging against the darkness of this generation. God is looking for young men and young ladies that will give their hearts to Him and allow Him to transform them into weapons of mass destruction against darkness. And if you dare to say, here I am, O oh Lord, He will pick you up. He will transform you. He will restore you. He will fill you up with His Spirit and use you for His glory. Come on, I want to see warriors praying. Come on, unleash that passion, that fire, that prayer that you have within you. In the name of Jesus. 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 Oh, Nabashkaya. Krishkara Babrasia. Baptize us, Lord, with your fire. We need your fire, Lord. Give us more. Give us more of your anointing. More of your presence. More of your fire. More of your seal. More of your knowledge. More of you, Lord. More of you, Lord. More, more, more. We need more. We want more. How about How many of you are hungry? How many of you are thirsty for the presence of God? See, there's a, there's a promise in the Bible that if you ask, you will receive. Jesus said that if you ask for the Holy Spirit, the Father will not deny it. So I want you to lift up your hands and for a minute, I want you to ask him about nothing else but the sense of the Spirit of God. 
I want you to ask him to baptize you with his, with his presence. I want you to pray for what really matters. See, I want you for a minute or two to set aside your worries, your wants. And I want you to call on God for a double portion of His Spirit. If you're really hungry, if you're really thirsty, if you really know what you really need, I want you to call upon Him and say, fill me up, God. Fill me up, Lord. I need more of you. I need more of you. I need more of you. Come on, I want to see young people praying. I want to see young people hungry. I want to see young people calling upon God. In Jesus' mighty name. Come, come, come. Come, come, come. Come, come, come. Send your rain, Lord. Send your rain, Lord. Send your rain, Lord. Shkala bakeshkoya. Kerama sadara kushkiala. Woo! Come on. Come on, Ezwaye. Come on. Come on. Come on. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We want you, Lord. We want you, Lord. We want you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We want more. Ishkara Bakamasia. Ishkara Bashkaya. Woo! Receive in the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive it now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Soya. Oh, Babashkia. Lord, we need more of you. We need more of your presence. We need more of your fire. We need more of your spirit. We need more, Lord. We're calling upon you, Lord. Because we understand that nothing can fill the void of this generation but you. Nothing, nothing, nothing can fill this hole in my soul but you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need your power. We need your light. We need your glory. We need your presence. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. See, you need to understand that wherever Jesus went, Whenever he encountered a situation, he had the power to change it. Whenever Jesus went and there was nothing to eat, his power provoked the provision of whatever they needed. When someone needed forgiveness, Jesus forgave them. 
When someone needed healing, Jesus healed them. When someone needed a word to come out of the sadness of living without direction, Jesus just spoke a powerful word upon that person. So you need to understand that in many cases in your life, you've been looking for the wrong thing. You don't need another loan. You don't need more money. You don't need another boyfriend or another girlfriend. You don't need a change of situation. What you really need is Jesus. Because if Jesus walk into your life, everything is going to change. See, sometimes we wonder why Things never change in our lives. But sometimes we make the mistakes of not understanding that the agent of change is the presence of God. So we start looking for the change and not for the changer. Once Jesus walked into your house, into your family, into your relationship, into your college, into your life, into your emotions. Everything is going to change. Whatever is dead will come back alive. Whatever is sick will be healed. Whatever is broken will be fixed. Somebody's supposed to shout there. So if you're here tonight, if you are in this conference, it's because you understand the truth. That above everything else, what you really need in your life is more of Jesus, more of His Spirit, more of His presence, more of His Word, more of His truth. So I want you to do something tonight with a lot of love and respect. I want you to just lay hands on somebody's shoulder. And if you feel offended by that, let me remind you that because we're going to close our eyes, it will be nice to know where that hand is. <laughs> and I want you for a minute or two to understand this principle. The Bible says that after Job prayed for his friends. The Lord restored everything the devil took from him. And I want you to do something right now. I want you to pray the presence of God on your friend, on your brother, on your partner, self partner, prayer partner, whatever. I want you to pray the presence of God over their lives. Don't pray for any changes because you might not even know what they need. I want you to just pray, Lord, I want you to fill my brother, fill my sister with your presence. No, 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 but I want you to pray like you mean it, with intensity. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we are asking for your presence in our friend's life. Come upon them, Lord, and lay your hand the way my hand is in their shoulder. Lord, let your presence be felt all over their bodies, from their head to their toe. Fill them up, Lord. Fill them up, Lord. Let them leave this conference knowing that you've been right upon them. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I pray Jesus over you. I pray his presence over you. I pray the Holy Ghost He's anointed over you. Be filled with the Spirit of God. Be filled with the Spirit of God. Be filled with the Spirit of God.
the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You're going to feel the anointing tonight that you haven't felt it in a long time. And as Jesus walked into your life, sin will leave, depression will leave. Sickness will live in the name of Jesus. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the Holy Spirit. Receive the presence of God now. Let that fire burn, Lord. Let your glory be present now. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Fire. 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 Mushkara Mata Masaya. Mushkara Mata Mushkara In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. His presence brings you healing. His presence brings you joy. His presence brings you peace. His presence brings you happiness receive it now in Jesus mighty name thank you Lord I want you to lift up your hand I said Lord above everything else I want you to know that I came to this conference for you amen i want you to give god the best clap offering you have ever given him come on come on come on it's okay to shout to high five five people I want you to tell them it's so good to have you here tonight how many of you are happy to be here tonight <laughs> you are a radical good looking bunch. <laughs> Where are the leaders of SYA? God bless you. Now, in a few minutes, you're going to hear my sexy accent. <laughs> Speaking the word of God. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> I want you to remain standing for a minute or two. I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna talk to you about the program. Now, many of you tonight sign up for a program that you didn't even know existed. And tonight, I'm going to sign you out. Book of Daniel, chapter 1, verse 3. If you have a Bible, I see people with their phones in their hand. Hope you're not looking in Instagram, anything. 
because the Lord won't kill you, but I will. I know that you don't read the Bible app like this. So I get you. Book of Daniel chapter 1, verse 3. And the king spake unto Aspenas, the master of the eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes, children in whom was not blemish, they had to be good looking, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding in science. And such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank. Father, thank you so much for every young man and every young lady tonight because I know your word will touch them deeply and will take them to another level in you. In Jesus' mighty name, I want to hear an amen, an amen, an amen. I want you to sit down for a minute and I want to share with you something important. I'm going to need to put some cultural historic context to be able to preach to you about this passage. In verse 1 of Daniel chapter 1, you see that a king called Nebuchadnezzar, and I know nosotros somos Latinos, Everybody solamente se llama Jose y Maria. But this guy was named Nebuchadnezzar. And this king took over by force the people of God. He was a heathen king. He was literally a demon possessed man. He was the king of Babylon and literally the way he took over the people of God was violently. He killed people and destroyed their homes and made them prisoner. So this king represents the enemy. Because that's exactly what the enemy wants to do in your life. He wants to take control over you to destroy you. And the Bible says that this king was successful. In verse 2, we see something very prophetic. That once he took over the people of God, they, they went into the temple of God and they took every utensil. And they brought it to their land and put the holy utensils of worship for God in the heathen temples. And that's very prophetic. Because whatever happened in the physical, he was just about to do it in the spiritual. Now I want you to pay attention to what I'm going to say. Because if you don't get what I'm going to say right now, you're going to be lost. Don't worry about it. If I was the devil, I would do the same thing. But listen to this. Verse 3. He tells his people, I want you to go. Into the people of Israel and bring me the prince of God. Now you need to understand that back in those days, the prince in the people of God were not like the Disney prince. You know, they weren't la la la, la la la. No, no. 
Back in those days, the sons of the king were the ones to take the people of God into battle. While everybody was working, these people were being trained to fight. They were literally like the Navy SEALs back in those days. So this man, this king, this evil king says, I want you to bring me the prince. I want you to bring me all of them. They have to be sharp. They have to be intelligent. They have to be good looking. They have to be the best of the best. Hunt them down and bring it to me. So those guys start running and they go bring the best of the best. And when they all come, they're all freaking out. Because if the devil is calling you, man, you know things are not looking great. So they all come. They're waiting to see what was going on. And King Nebuchadnezzar comes out. And this is going to be shocking to you. But King Nebuchadnezzar didn't scare them. He said, what's up, guys? What's going on? He said, listen, guys. You know why I brought you here? And they said, no, we have no idea. I brought you here because I'm going to dress you with the best clothes you ever dreamed having. I am going to feed you with the best food you ever had. You're going to hang out with me. And you're going to hang out with my entourage. I mean, all the rappers and pop <laughs> And pop singers are going to be here. And you're going to be my crew. You're not listening, but it's true. Listen. He told them, you're going to be working out every day. You got to look good. You're going to be dressing good. You're going to be eating excellent. You're going to be in all my parties. You're going to be in everything I do. Imagine. What, what do you think this guy said? They say, sign me in. But you see, if someone tells you that, what will be the logical question? What's the catch? What's the catch? You mean to tell me, you're supposed to be my enemy. And you're going to dress me. You're going to feed me. You're going to give me money. You're going you're gonna to have me in the palace. You're going to be me a penthouse. You're going to give me all that. Why? Why are you going to do that? And what that guy said was, you got to look good because what we want to do is to show everybody the beautiful people that we dominate. That's what they were supposed to do. They were supposed to, do, to be models. They were supposed to be walking around and he could say, you see that guy? I control all of his people. You see that other guy? I control all of his people. And they were supposed to walk around as he glorious. You know, he, he glows on himself of his power. And, and he will say to everybody, you see those young men that look like model? I own them. And the only thing that Nebuchadnezzar wanted was for them never to be warriors again. You will never come against me. You will never have authority. You will never try to revive the people. You will never march into battle. And that's exactly what the devil has done to this generation. The devil has called the youth of this generation in the church. And has told them, listen, you need to be into fashion. You need to be into social network. You need to be into sneakers and, 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 and fabric and, and pop culture and whatever the heck. You need to do that. But what you cannot do is to be a man of authority. Is to be a man of anointing. Is to be a man that can cast out devils. Is to be a man of a woman of God that can prophesy. That can, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying right now. 
And we find in church kids that have been 10 years in church and they have not led one soul to Jesus. They don't pray. They don't fast. They don't have a group. And if they have a group, all they do is talk about nonsense. And we have a whole generation today that has never cast out a demon. They're surrounded by friends that are homosexuals or friends that are about to shoot themselves if they can get a gun. But they don't care because my social network and my videos in TikTok supposed to be what I'm doing. Let me tell you, it is a curse from the devil. The devil wants you to be someone that does nothing but vanity. They turn around. And they said, whoa, 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 whoa. What, are you, what is this guy talking about? What is this guy talking about? Yeah, man. The guy's going to give us everything. Everything. We're talking about Ferragamo Gucci. <laughs> Louis Vuitton. But what's the price? Price is simple. We just don't fight him. We just look good. We just work out every day. <laughs> we, 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 just, we just go into, into, into our video games and hang out. We, we, we just become Christians that don't offend anybody. We just the cool tattoo, weird hair Christian. You, you know what I mean? Like the Bieber. Like the Bieber. That's what we want to be. We want to be cool. We want to be like the world. We, we don't want that thing. fasting, praying. That's legalistic, bro. You know, that's legalistic. You know, how you going to be? You got to be cool. You got to accept everything. You got to go and be and have fun. Your thing should be looking good. That way when they look at you with your pechito, the pollito, everybody says, oh, my God, he looks so good that I want to convert. Oh, my God. That was the program. He says, sign here. And you will have everything you want. You'll be the coolest. You will have everything you dream. Sign here. And you'll be amazed. How many young people in church are part of that program? They signed the program, but they don't even know it. If you don't pray, you're part of the program. If you're more worried about your next tattoo than about your next soul, you're part of the program. If it hurts for you to go to group or go to church, you're part of the program. If you're in the church of soul winning people, but you don't care about people, you're part of the program. If you're here and you don't even have a clue what I'm talking about, you're part of the program. If you're more into fashion, if you're more into whatever the heck the world is, if you know more about uh, Kim Kardashian, than about Jesus, than about the power of God. You are part of the program. And the devil is really happy with you. And you're going to start receiving notification that your friend just took pills and he's dead. And you're going to be crying and you're going to be saying, how can that be? Of course, you never share the gospel with them. You wake up in the morning and the first thing you do is not prayer because that's old fashioned. You go into your feet. You go into TikTok. You go into whatever. Oh, no, 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 no. Right now, it's too late. 
But if you go home, you're going to play video games until 1 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning. Somehow you're not sleepy there, but you're sleepy here. And you're the coolest, and you're the coolest, and everybody see your hair that looks like something blow up in your head. And you, but you're cool, you dress cool, you talk cool, you are cool, cool, cool. But you have no authority. You haven't seen a miracle. You don't have faith to see your drug addict, drug addict friends come to Jesus. You're scared all the time and depressed all the time. You sleep until one o'clock and then you wonder what happened. What is Jesus? I know some of you are saying, why did I bring my friend tonight? Because your friend needs to hear this. Because there is more vanity in church than outside church. Because we come in here and we come with all the junk that we're supposed to leave out there. And we have keep fornicating in church. Don't look. There's fornication in church. There's drugs in church. I tell you what, there is not in church holiness and prayer, miracles and reaching. And then people say, what's going on with God? What's happening with God? Everywhere I go, I see thousands upon thousands of miracles. Blind people see, deaf people hear. We were in Maracaibo, Venezuela the other day. And there were so, so many people on front of the platform. And I said, who called these people? Please, please, who called these people? They say, those were the people that were in the wheelchair. They left the wheelchair. They're totally healed. There were little kids running around crying. A lady received a miracle, got on top of the stage, but she had a baby. There were so many people, she didn't, she didn't want to leave the baby. She was healed. She was deaf. And she came to the stage to give her testimony, but her daughter was born with a problem in the spine. Never walk. But the lady is there waiting her turn to share that she heard from her right ear and all of a sudden the baby started fighting with her and the baby fell and started running all over the place for the first time in her life but you can do that when you are in that program when you are in a vanity program when you're hooked on whatever you were supposed to be set free. You have the same prejudice you had out there. You have the same ambition you had out there. You have the same dreams. What are they dreaming? To preach in Africa? No. To get my next Gucci. And the enemy... The enemy told these young warriors, I will give you everything. I will not hurt you. You will be so happy because you will have everything. I will parade you as the best of the best. You will hang out with the richest king in the world. And the only thing that I want from you guys is don't come against me. Don't fight me. Don't threaten me. And you know why young people are so into vanity today? Because that takes your power away. They can go to a party. Yeah, Christians, Christians, Christians. They can go to a party until four o'clock. But they're here worshiping and they're. Like
like they're about to go into a coma. Because they're not used to that. My thing is the world. My thing is work out. I'm working out. And, and they know, they know. Have you, have, you, have you ever heard an ex-fat person? They want to tell you all the tips in the world about working out. They only lost six ounces, but they know everything. You know? But, they, but they talk, and when you hear them, you say, oh, my God, this person is crazy. Oh, my God. And everybody's into gym. And I have nothing against that. But the problem is, if you just trade that kind of life for your power, trust me, you never do anything that matters. See, it's the difference between the movie Barbie and the movie Sounds of Freedom. They villainized this movie. They tried to stop it. They said it's a conspiracy theory. They said it's the stupidest movie in the world. Why? Because there was a hero, people, trying to snatch out of the hands of hell some kids. And that society that is contaminated by hell is telling people it's crazy that you like the movie. People doing that, making a difference. Stop it. You like to like Barbie with a bunch of gay people. Men dress in pink. Oh, my God, it's so beautiful. And what's the message behind Barbie? Nothing. That you are as stupid as the people that make that movie. And if you ever come with a pink wig here, I am going to jump and I'm going to strangle you. Send you to meet the Lord in person. Everybody's a Barbie girl, and everybody's a Barbie boy. Oh my God, oh, this is a Barbie, 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 oh Barbie. But you ask them, what, what does the Bible say in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 3? Oh no, aren't you a Christian? Yes, pregúntame algo de Barbie, please. <laughs> but that's the kind of world that you're living in, that's the kind of world. And white is supposed to be against black. And black is supposed to be against yellow. And yellow is supposed to be, I don't even know. And everybody's full of nonsense. And we're supposed to be different. But we come in with the same nonsense. You see, God called these young men to be warriors. To fill them with the power of God. To set the people free. To make a difference. And what the devil wanted. Was to reduce them. To be harmless. The churches are full of harmless Christians. You don't scare anybody. Devils sit down to eat with you in the kitchen. Because they're not scared of you. When Jesus walked into a synagogue, devils were scared. They screamed, oh my God, it's a torture. But no, now they hang out with you. They go watch Barbie with you. You were born to destroy hell. To set people free, to heal the sick, to cast out devil, to raise the dead, to snatch your family out of the clutches of hell. You're, I don't know who am I preaching to now. You're supposed to be a hero, and the devil is deceiving you, he's telling you you're nothing but a moral. You're nothing but an object. That's nonsense. A lot of young people are looking for the love. <laughs> Same exact thing that the world is doing. I want my media naranja. <laughs> I 
They all dream about money and dream about this. And God, please, please touch Alfredo. <laughs> touch him that he touched me. I'm going to keep it real here. I don't care if you like it. Vanity. Vanity takes away your power. And that's exactly what happened in this passage. I'm going to give you everything you want. I just don't want you to have authority and power. And a lot of young people today are right there. Where they have trade. Their anointing. Their assignment. The purpose of God. For pure vanity. They don't dream about going on a mission one day and seeing dead people raised, blind eyes open. They don't pray for gift of the spirit. They don't, they don't, they don't say, I'm going to spend the whole night praying because I want God to touch me. In a way that when I go tomorrow to college, people will feel the presence of God in my life. They don't do that. But they watch La Casa de Papel, La Casa de Cartón y La Casa de Plástico. They don't call a friend to testify, but they call Uber 16 times a day. They don't read the word of God. They don't share the gospel. They don't even want to go to church. I go to church because Julia is going to be there. Have you seen Julia? I don't even want to go to a group. And those are the leaders. Most Christians today, you ask them, have you ever cast out a demon? A what? A demon. What do I mean? Exactly what I mean. A demon. Oh, in front night? No, 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 no. <laughs> Tonight. They don't even know. They don't know. Try to tell this generation to stop looking junk in the internet. Try to tell them. Try to tell somebody. Why are you fighting stupid characters in front night and instead of be fighting real demons? Try to tell them that. I was in San Francisco, California, and this lady comes to me and said, I just wanted to tell you, God bless you. I said, thank you so much. Eight years ago, I was going to commit suicide. I turned on the TV because I wanted noise, because I didn't want anybody to hear what was going to happen. This just happened to me again. It has happened before. The lady turned on the TV, and guess who's screaming in the TV? Me, myself, and I. She wanted noise, she got noise. And right when she turned on this, and I know you, I know some of you don't know what a TV is, but some people still use that. You know? But immediately I said, don't do it. She told me that. I was, no way. Yes, way. She told me, don't do it. Jesus loves you and he has a plan for your life. That lady accepted Jesus and now she's a pastor of a growing church. God has restored her life. But you cannot do that while you are in the vanity program, King Kardashian. Turn to the one next to you and say, He's actually worse 
He's been nice tonight. He doesn't know bad words in English. So you might be a spare today. But I want you to pay attention. When Nebuchadnezzar told them, listen, I want you to sign you up for this program. You get all the Gucci, all the Ferragamo, everything you want. It's going to be cool, Louis Vuitton, whatever. You're going to be mejor que Kanye West. But you need to stop thinking in the throwing me. You need to stop being a menace towards my kingdom. And in the chapter 1, book of Daniel, verse 6, this is what happened. Now among this where of the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave them name, for he gave unto Daniel the name of Bersasar, and to Hananiah, Shadrach, and to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah, Abednego. But Daniel purpose in his heart. That's where everything started. I cannot do it for you. If you want to spend your life doing nonsense, you're going to do it. If you want to waste your time, you're going to do it. But when you purpose on your heart that you're going to change, that you're going to make things differently, that you're going to seek God, that you're going to live a different life, that you're going to move in a different frequency... Daniel, purpose in his heart that he will not defile himself. And that's where everything starts. You need to purpose that in your heart. You need to be the kind of young man, the kind of young woman that walk in a different direction, with, in a different rhythm than the rest of your friends. I am not like my friends were. I am not. I had a whole bunch of friends that all they wanted to do was waste it. I had a lot of friends that today they're doing the same thing they were doing when I found God. And that is nothing. They're still smoking marijuana. They're still sleeping around. They're still playing video games. Believe it or not. Stupid 50 years old playing video games. They're married and their marriage are horrible. Their economy is horrible. Their faith is not existing. No anointing. But one day, I saw myself surrounded by idiots. And I said, I need to be a different kind of idiot. That way I can help these idiots. And I purpose in my heart. I'm going to say that again. I purpose in my heart. I can feel with your heart. I can make decisions with your heart. I can think like you think. But in the name of the Lord, the Lord gave me the ability to purpose in my heart. And that's the decision I made a long time ago. And I have traveled the world. And my life has meaning. And millions of people have been transformed into the kingdom by the power of God because one day, one night, one moment I purposed in my heart that I was going to be different. Daniel said no. What did he say? No. What did he say? No. In verse 8, the word purpose is from the Hebrew zoom. That means determination with vigor, 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 strength and violence. Take it by force to bring a heart to rage and seal 
for something. You need to get to a point of rage. You need to understand that there is a purpose that is being wasted every time you waste any time. You need to get to the point of saying, my God, I'm called to do something glorious. I'm filled with the Spirit. I have the Word of God. God called me for something great. What am I doing? Daniel said, I'm not going to sign in. And the other guy said, are you sure? He said, no. You don't like Gucci? You don't like Louis Vuitton? You're not going to hang out with the beaver? You're not going to be in the parties? You know they're going to give us a BMW. You know the king has a yacht. Can we go to the party first and then we break the contract? He said no. He said no. He said no. And that's what you need to say. No. Of course everybody thought he was crazy. Of course everybody thought he was stupid. But I'd rather be a fool in the eyes of men than a fool in the eyes of God. He said no. He told his friend, don't do it. Don't do it. We got to do something different. We will call for something different. He's trying to buy us. He's trying to deceive us. What's going to happen if we accept this? We will forsake our purpose. Our purpose is bigger than our situation. This situation will pass. But the purpose of God is eternal. He said, no, I'm not going to do it. And his friend said, so we won't do it either. And the second he said that, verse 9 said that God brought favor over Daniel. Oh my God, can somebody say amen? Amen. See, because when you say no, in this earth, God say yes in heaven. And God responded with an anointing of favor. Oh, my God. Somebody's supposed to say amen. You know that each crusade we have in different places end up being $150,000, $200,000. You know how much money I have to put for a crusade? Zero. And you say, what? That's called favor. That's called favor. When I went to Bible University, a guy that didn't know me paid for my books my tuition, my apartment, my food, everything. He gave me a car. He didn't even know me. It was a guy from Aspen, Colorado that heard about me. And by the time I got to Texas, my tuition was paying full. You know how much this building costs? You want to get overwhelmed? Almost $20 million. <laughs> yes. $20 million. It's almost paid. How can that be? It's called favor. I have traveled the world. 
have seen people all over this earth coming to Jesus. People being healed and delivered. But just as Daniel did, one day I said, I don't think so. I'm going to live for something greater than a next pair of shoes. I'm going to live for something meaningful. I'm going to do something with my life that lasts even when I depart from this earth. You are here because one day I said no. You are here. Because one day when God heard that I said no, he dumped favor on me. And everything you do, everything you see, is just because of his favor. It's not because I'm the best. It's not because I'm this or that. No freaking way. It's because of his favor. That's all. His favor. A minute under the favor of God would be better than 30 years working hard without it. In a second, God can give you an idea. In a second, God can open a door. In a second, God can make that key person in your destiny found you. In a minute. And that's what happened to as soon as he said I am not going to live by vanity favor came over him and, he, and, and the best definition of favor Reverend, Reverend Bill Whiston from, from Chicago said it's a free gift of God to do great and mighty exploits for God and for his kingdom, bringing the supernatural increase, promotion, restoration, honor, power, and other gifts into your life. That's what favor is. It's receiving what you don't work for. It's receiving what you cannot buy. He's receiving what your father didn't leave you in an inheritance. He's receiving the context and the people that you don't even know but they're key for your life. That's what favor is. One second under that favor will take you and propel you to another dimension. The second he said, no. God said, you are going to receive my favor. So when Daniel went to the lion's den, lions couldn't touch him. And when he came out, Millions of people came to the knowledge of God. That is favor. When Sadrach, Meshach, and Abel Negro went to the fire furnace, the fire did not touch them. And when they came out, millions of people came to the knowledge of God. But people read this and think, oh my God, why? Why isn't God doing that for me? Because you need to step out of the program. You need to step out of that world mentality. You need to get away from what the devil wants to do. Want to hear something funny? Nebuchadnezzar never, never told them to renounce to their God. They, he never told them, deny your faith. He never told them, burn your Bible. 
He never told them, don't pray. Because the devil does not care about those things. The devil just wants you harmless. Because if you pray but you don't do nothing with it. If you read the word but you don't do nothing with it. If you fast but you don't do nothing with it. It doesn't matter. You are a religious young man. A religious young lady. But you are doing nothing. You can pray all you want. You can come to youth group. You can come to this conference. And the devil is not intimidated by you. The devil loves religion. He can be hanging out right next to you. He doesn't really care about that. And as long as you are entertained with your life and your money, money in my mind. And your dreams and your gym. This is the most important thing because we just got to be beautiful. <laughs> we got to be beautiful to represent Jesus. And you worry about your next tattoo. And you worry about, you know, how people perceive you. And you in your narcissistic vanity are no threat to the devil. Nebuchadnezzar said, chill, baby. I'm not going to tell you to deny your God. I'm not going to tell you to, to, to burn your Bible. What do you think? I'm crazy. Be a Christian, but don't be a warrior. You think that the devil will be intimidated of our ministry? If I was just hanging out with you guys, you think so? No freaking way. No freaking way. He wouldn't care. He wouldn't care. The devil is not intimidated with your Christianity. If your Christianity doesn't do anything, you are harmless. You're not dangerous. The devil wants you to waste it. The devil wants you to live a life full of vanity. The devil wants you to get full of religion. The devil wants you to go to church just to see what somebody else is wearing. The devil wants you to go to youth group just because there's a new girl. The devil wants you to spend most of your life doing nothing. What the devil doesn't want you to do is to snatch people from the clutches of hell. Is to become a warrior. Is to become a man or a woman of God that can put the fear of God in anybody that surrounds you. Stand up for a minute. So I'm going to tell you how that story ends. Daniel said, We will not eat the food from the king's table. And these people were nuts. What are you talking about? You're you crazy. Not comply. We will not submit. We will not be part of your game. We will not eat the food. And the guy said, but you don't, you don't understand. If you get skinny, they're going to kill me and they're going to kill you. And you know what they say? Oh no. I will show you that my God is more powerful than anything that come against us.
They didn't eat the food. And they were stronger every day. The same way when they told them, we want you to bow down to the idol, they said, no. They were rebellious against anything the enemy wanted them to do. They refused to be controlled. They refused to be manipulated. And the king said, we're going to put you in the fire furnace. Do whatever the heck you want to do, man. I'd rather die obeying God than comply with your nonsense. They threw this guy into the fire. And Jesus walking into the fire. Somebody's supposed to say amen there. Because when you say no down here, God say yes up there. Oh, it didn't stop there. Oh, no, 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 no. Then another law came. Everybody supposed to stop praying. Nobody can pray. Daniel went up to this house, opened the window, and started shaka baka ba sokro bashia erabaka shaka. They arrested the guy. They threw him in the lion's den, and no lion touched him. When Daniel walked into the lion's den, the angel of the Lord was waiting for him. Why? Because he said no. I will not defile myself. I will not contaminate my relationship with God. I will not fail God. I will not become a narcissistic toy. I will not become something for people. I am of God, for God, through God. I will not have it. I don't want to make money that way. I don't want to be famous that way. I don't want clothes that way. I want what is of God for my life. If it's little, it's little. If it's much, it's much. But I am going to serve God no matter what. And every time they say no, heaven opened up and responded. So listen up, young man. Listen up, young lady. You hold the key of your next move with God if you are being manipulated by the world if you are being pressured by your friends if you are being persecuted and condemned written off or abandoned because of your faith understand that you don't need those people you only need God, you only need God, you only need God. And people ask me, how can you stand on front of on front of 200,000 people and don't get nervous? No way. I step in into that because I'm supposed to be there. Because I understood long time ago that I'm a warrior. That I was born to destroy hell. To snatch people out of the clutches of the enemy. I am not perfect. I am not infallible. I am not in any way, shape or form the best. But I know I am a warrior that said no. You need to say no no to the devil's program and say yes to God's program (laughs) 
five years from now. Listen up. Because you're going to think this is prophetic. But it's not. It is my experience. Five years from now. Some of you will look back to this night. And you will remember. And you will say. should have made a decision that night but I didn't and I'm away from God and I'm still doing nothing for God I feel lost I'm depressed everything seems to go wrong I don't even know who I am How do you know that, Bishop? Because I deal with people every single day at all levels. And I know how easy it is to come to a meeting like this and allow the enemy to completely blind you to the opportunity of changing your life forever. Five years from now, there will be some of you serving God under the glorious power of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Prosperous, whole, with a great family that loves God. Laughing in the kitchen table because God worked out a miracle after a miracle after a miracle because your faith has grown more and more and more. Five years from now, you will be surrounded by hundreds of young people that you witness and the life was changed because tonight you made a decision in your heart that you will be the warrior that God called you to be. The last question is who do you want to be out of those two people Five years from now and if by any chance you say I want to be the latter I want to be that man and that woman of God that broke out of the program of the enemy and entered into a new relationship with God if you are that person I want you to step out of your seat and I want you to come to the front. Come on. Come on. I want you to close your eyes and raise your hands and we're going to worship for a minute or two. And as we worship, I want you to make this moment solemn. I want you to make this moment unique. I don't want you to come down here just because it's fashionable. Just because that's what we do. I want you to come down here because you understand in your heart that you were born to be a warrior. That you cannot waste time. That you have something mighty and glorious to accomplish. That maybe the devil has filling you up with all kinds of crazy problems and ideas just to set you in the wrong path. No matter what the enemy does, no matter how much he wants you away from God, he will not be able if you don't let him. He will not. I said he will not. 
The Bible says that there was a man filled with demons. His name was the gathering. And the man had 2,000 demons. That's what the Bible said. A legion. Some people divert. Some people say that a legion is 2,000. And other people say that it's 5,000. I don't care. There were a whole bunch of demons. But the man had 2,000 demons. But when he saw Jesus, he ran to Jesus. Drop on his knees and said, Lord, here I am. And you know what happened? Jesus set him free. Why am I telling you this? Because all hell won't be able to stop you when you run to Jesus. No matter how much the enemy tried for you not to be here tonight, you're here. No matter how many times the devil tried for you not to hear this message, you heard the message. No matter how many times the devil told you leave, it's late, you're supposed to do this and that. You ran to this altar and you will be set free by the power of God. Because all it takes is the purpose of your heart. That's all it takes. When you purpose in your heart, God will do the rest. That's what Daniel did. That's what Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did. That's what I did. That's what every young person can do. I want you to lay hands on your chest. I want you to lay hands on your heart. And I want you to pray for that heart. And as you pray, I want you to ask God to take away all the junk all the garbage, the many things that a vanity program will lay in that heart. Things that have been slowing you, you down. Things that have been diverting your vision. Things that have been setting you in the wrong path. I want you to tell God, take it out of my heart. Because I feel I'm drifting away. And I don't want to. I want you to ask God to take any sin away. I want you to ask God to take any uncleanness away. I want you to ask God. Take my dirty thought. Take my laziness. Take my lack of emotion about you, God. Take it away. Take it away, Lord. Because it's killing my faith. It's killing my heart. It's killing me. If you can pray in the Spirit, I want you to pray in the Spirit. If you don't know how to pray, just pray in tongues. But I want you to ask God, take it away. Take it away. It's hurting me. I need you to break this idea. I need you to burn this dream. I need you, Lord, to take away this thought that is destroying my faith. Break this relationship. Break this spirit of fornication. Break my past. Destroy, oh Father, my hurt emotion. In the name of Jesus, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Oh, I am the 
fire of God is consuming your heart in the name of Jesus. Let him through. Let him do it. Let him do it. Let him do it. Tonight is your night of deliverance. The night is your night. Shakaba Kabaira, Ishkana Mabashea, Eva Shakana Baye. Oh, Shakaba Eva Shaka, Lubishkaya. Oh, in the name of Jesus, send them free, Lord. Send them free, Lord. Some of you have been carrying things that don't even belong in that heart anymore. See, sometimes pain has been with us for so long that we feel it's part of us and we don't want to let it go. Pain is so part of who we are that we feel that we will lose who we are if we let go of that pain. I want you tonight to give the Lord your pain whatever make you afraid whatever you can even tell people whatever won't let you sleep I want you to give it to God literally give it to Him people see you secure but you not. People see you strong, but you're not, you're not. People see you okay, but when you go home and you lock yourself in that room, you know you're not okay. Sometimes all it takes is to trust God and say, you know what, God? I don't even know how to get rid of this. I'm going to allow you to take it from me. Give God permission to heal you. Give God your pain, your fears. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I want you to heal those hearts. I want you to heal that pain. I want you to, Lord, to take away what they can't even give you, Lord. Because they don't even know how. I want you to heal them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I want you to dry those tears inside of them. I want you, Lord, to do what only you can do. To bring them into the fullness of your calling. In Jesus' name. Some of you are feeling peace like you never felt before. And that is just the beginning. There will be dreams that you will never dreams, dream again. There will be thoughts that will be completely erased out of your heart. There will be emotions, toxic emotions that you will never, never. This is not therapy. It's the Holy Spirit setting you free. I want you to lay both hands in your chest, in your heart. 
And I want you to say, Lord, now fill me up. Fill me up with your spirit. In Jesus' name, I want you to start thanking God. I want you to start thanking God. I want you to believe that a new anointing is coming on you. I want you to believe that you are being filled with the Holy Spirit. I want you to open up your mouth and start thanking God for a new anointing, a new level of His presence, a new fire, a new level of fire, a new level of anointing. Come on, I want to see people right now thanking God for a new beginning, for a new day, for a new anointing. In the name of Jesus, Lord, fill them with the Spirit. Fill them with your Spirit. Come on, I want to see people. If you can pray in tongues, start praying in tongues. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There it is. There it is. That's the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Oh, let him through, let him through, let him through, let him through. Touch them, Lord. Touch them, Lord. Touch them, Lord. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Spirit of God. Be filled, be filled, be filled, be filled, be filled. More, 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 more. The fire of God is right now within you. Receive it now. In the name of Jesus, you're going to walk out of here. Fill with the Holy Ghost. Shout out of our soya. Irrababa shatter the Messiah. In the name of Jesus. 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 Ishkana la makira mama shaya. Irrababa shaya. Mas, 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 mas. De la cabeza a los pies. From your head. In Jesus' name, now be filled with the Spirit of God. Be filled, be filled, be filled, be filled. Hallelujah, hallelujah. and I want you to remember this.
Jesus set free this man called the gathering. And then he told this man, I want you to go to your family and I want you to tell your family what I've done with you. The man went and five cities in the region of the Capolis, five cities were saved by the ministry of this man. You know what that means? That the next young person that you preach the gospel to, the next young person that you lay hands for God to heal their mind or set them free from addiction, the next young person that you snatch out of hell and you bring them to group or you bring them to church could win five cities for God. The daughter of the lady that brought me to the Lord was here tonight. She just stepped in. She's the mother of some of the young people that were here, even that young man with a hat backward. See, that lady never thought that God was going to use me the way He has used me in these three decades. She never thought. And she probably, she never preached in Japan. She never preached in some Latin American country. She never preached in Europe. But when he, she, she snatched me out of the hands of the enemy. She has changed so many people's lives. The same thing can happen with the next person you take out of the devil's power. So you see why you cannot allow the enemy to play games of waste your precious time and to stop serving God radically. Remember, Nebuchadnezzar never told this young man, don't pray, don't fast, don't read the Bible. But what he wanted was I want you to be dangerous. I'm going to repeat that one more time. I want you to be dangerous. I want demons to scream in fear when they see you walking under the favor and the anointing of God. I want you to be a warrior. Someone so radical that cares about nothing but fulfilling the purpose of God in his life. Can I hear an amen? Can I hear an amen? God bless you. Amen.
Can we give God, can we give God the biggest shout of praise? Just say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on. It is. It is safe to say that this has been the best conference yet. Amen. I have just a few announcements that I want to close with. One is that, okay, first of all, yes, this is the ending of conference. So everybody said, okay, yes, yes, yes. But, but there's more. <laughs> bro, don't tempt us, bro. <laughs> I don't know. No, 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 no. Uh, so here's the thing. Here's the thing. I don't know. It's up to them. <laughs> All right. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. We have, we have, we have Sunday service tomorrow. And, and... Don't forget that Summer Fridays continues all August. So every... Every Friday night we will be right here... Young adults are going to be in the mini sanctuary. High school is going to be here in the sanctuary. Guys, it continues. A lot of what we've experienced here in this conference, you are going to experience it on summer Fridays. Do not miss out. It is going to continue every Friday at 8 p.m. We will be right here. The last and final thing is if you do want to continue to honor our house, we are going to put a giving QR code here up on the screens. Guys, if anybody wants to sow into this house, first of all, how amazing has this conference been? How amazing, how powerful. This has been a complete change to everything that we've experienced before. And I think that there's still so much more to look forward to. If this one was good, imagine what next year's is going to look like. Come on. So I'm believing, I'm believing we're going to close out in prayer because there are a few videos that we want to show after this. One would be... Uh, would be a up and coming part four Billy on the street video that they really, that they really, really want to show you guys. So, so can we close out in prayer, guys? Can we just close our eyes, lift up our hands? Can you just right there where you are, just begin to thank God for everything that has happened so far. Just thank him, just thank him. Any ounce of transformation, just thank him. Just thank him. Say, Lord, I felt your presence, Father. Begin to put it even in, with your own words, with your own mouth. Just thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this church. Thank you for our bishop. Thank you for every guest. Thank you for the words that transform my heart my life. Lord, I believe that I will not leave this place the same way that I walked in. Father, thank you because since Thursday, Lord, your spirit has been falling in such a way that it has marked us and marked me so much that it will change my life. Lord, Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Father, Father, I just want to honor you, Lord, as the leader of this house for SYA, Lord. I'm believing, God, that every single seed that has been planted, God, that it will be sealed by your presence. I'm thanking you, God, because even as of now, Lord, our expectation for what can happen in your presence has gone beyond, beyond what we can imagine, Lord. I'm believing, God, that every single thing that we've seen, Lord, every miracle that we've experienced, every ounce of your presence, Lord, that it will not just simply be forgotten here, but it will encourage us to continue to take this to our communities, continue to take this to our schools, continue to take this to wherever we go, because, God, wherever we go, Lord, you go with us. So I'm believing, Lord, I'm believing, God, that every word that has been stamped into our heart, Lord, will not just show in the fruits, God, but will show in our lives, Lord. Uh, we will make better decisions, that we will leave our deserts and finally begin to taste the water of your presence, Father. I thank you, Jesus. We bring it close to this conference, knowing and acknowledging, God, that you, Jesus, are the only salvation of this world. You are the only one that can actually be the light that this world is looking for. So we're believing in what you've established in us, Lord. Pour into us, God. I pray that we experience your presence, God, even more outside of these four walls. I pray, God, that the encounters that we had in this room, that we have them in our room. I pray, God, that the encounters that we've had here, Lord, we can experiment them in our house. And not just we are changed by your presence, but also our families, also our neighbors, also every single person that's in our classrooms where we work, Lord. The way you transformed us, Lord, you can transform them.
The way you removed depression from us, God, you can remove it from them. The way you removed anxiety from us, God, the way you deleted some of the things that we've been struggling with for years, Lord, you can do it for them too. I pray that none of us keep our mouths quiet about how good our God is, but that we take this as a challenge to keep going forward, bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ to every living person we can encounter. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. It's in your name, Lord, that we pray and we say amen. Come on. Give a hug to somebody next to you and tell them we will see you on Sunday and Friday. Love you. Absolutely. Are you, I'm already starting. Are you going to make fun of me? May, like, like, respectfully. <laughs> Welcome back to Billy in La Calle. I want to introduce you to some of my friends. These are my friends. Mm, mm. Friends, um... I'm friend one. Friend one? I think two. Love that. Um, can we get, like, the name, though, just to... Like, I don't think people might know you. I don't think... Um, that's okay. My name... <laughs> my name is Chris Durso. They don't know you. Oh, true. <laughs> they um, shouldn't know me. Uh, I'm Chris 